What's up everybody, Ryan Swanson here, District Cutlery. Today I'm gonna show you guys how I thin out Takeda knives. Now, Takeda knives. These are some of the best performing knives that are out there. All right, super thin, super high performance, relatively hard to sharpen in my opinion, okay? Generally Scandi grind, okay? This off down here they call Scandi grind. It's one edge, okay? There's no primary and secondary bevel edge geometry. It's just from where this polished part is, the cladding and the core steel, that's the edge, okay? Now, these are also lately, they call, it's not, it's not an S grind, it's sort of what I dub S forged, where looking at it, stick at the spine, tapers in thin, and where this, where this bevel starts, this little shinogi sticks out and then there's your edge. So what it does, the edge is basically a wedge. Now, I get customers all the time being like, my new Takeda is wedging. And that's because it's literally a wedge. In fact, all knives are wedge. It just depends on the edge geometry of how much they're going to wedge. So with Takeda's, this is how they're designed. This is how he makes them. I'm sure, now he's a master smith, he's a master craftsman. I have the utmost respect for Takeda sound. The reason that I thin these blades out is because customers ask me to, okay? There's a need for a service. I'm able to deliver that service. I sometimes don't think that they need to be. Sometimes I'll talk people out of it because this is relatively new. Just like this knife, this knife is relatively new. Looks like the customer has sharpened it maybe once or twice. He has put a nice polish on it. Like did a really, really good job sharpening it. But it is just the nature of these blades and it's just how they're made. So I don't like to change the nature of the knife unless the customer asks me to. And even then, as I said, I'll often talk him out of it because it's just how the knife is. It's just it's how he intended it to be. But in the end, I'm able to do it I like to do it, so I'll do it. So what I'm gonna do, this knife has right now what they call a Scandi grind. Scandi meets from, comes, comes from Scandinavia. It's originated in Scandinavia for some reason, I don't know. Basically one giant edge, no little primary secondary edge geometry. One giant primary edge, which is a wedge. What I'm going to do is knock this Basically knock this shoulder off right along this line, bring that up, trying not to scratch the blade, and then I'll go into, so that's going to raise up the shinogi here, bring it up this way, and then I'm going to put traditional primary secondary edge geometry on here. Now, full disclosure, this is difficult. This is one of the few things that I do here at the shop that it's just, it's hard for me to do. Okay, super focused. In fact, I'm shooting a video right now. You know, I've got comfortable being proficient at doing this that I'm able to shoot this video, but this is a laser focused job. This is not some, I'm gonna do it on a belt grinder. This thing, but this is moving real fast, okay? This is not really for you guys at home. You got your new grinder setups, whatever you're using to just like go take your $500 knives, put it on a belt grinder, all right? Don't do that. This is like, okay, this is full disclaimer from District Cutlery and Ryan Swanson. Don't do this unless you absolutely are sure you know what you're doing, okay? I've got a nice bath right here. I'll generally do a pass or two keep it on ice. I'm generally, I'm very, very careful about my heat. I've read some comments, you know, cause I've posted stuff about my thinning to K's before and people were saying that the fact that the, the knife is giving sparks, it's overheating. It's not true. It's just the nature of grinding. I'm keeping my fingers right on the blade as I'm grinding. There's no worry. There's no need to worry about overheat. I'm very, very conscious of that. Okay. So again, unless you know what you're doing, don't do this. If you want to come and train with me, we can make an arrangement and I'll show you how to do it in person and take you through step by step on what to do. But please, just from watching this video, you know, it's gonna give you an idea of what you do and this is just to show that it can be done on a grinder 
instead of wasting a whole day doing this on stones. Trust me, I'm very good at sharpening takedas on stones. I'm very good at maintaining scandy grinds on stones. I'm very good at even thinning a knife on the stones. But I don't want to take a full day of my life to do it. It's not worth it for me monetarily, psychologically, honestly, to just spend the day doing this. If you're a hobbyist and want to get to it on stones, that's fine too. You can do that. But as a business, I have the tools to do it. I have the hands and the skills to do it. And that's why I'm doing it. Okay. So please, I don't want to see in the comments, you said you go ahead and do and go and sharpen my Takeda on a belt grinder. You'll get there eventually, but it's going to take practice and lots and lots and lots of time for you to get the experience to go ahead and jump on a grinder to thin a $500 knife, especially with this way. So I'm going to start 80 grit ceramic, ceramic, okay? My belt grinder's here at two by 30. I run a small radial platen over here, okay? That's just sort of reducing the surface area. It's tough to do it on a flat platen. So I sort of made myself a small little radial platen reduces the surface area. So I'm able to just make contact with this area right here. If I had a flat platen, you're going on the whole entire blade, but I just want to sharpen right on this part right here. So I'm going to do a couple passes. I'll show you what I mean. And then, so basically, let me run through it. I'm going to basically grind these shoulders down. As I said, grind these shoulders down. Then I'm going to go to my stone, and when it's close to where I want at the edge geometry, I'm going to go over to my stone station, put on a primary edge. It's not going to take much. And then I'm going to come back and work it. So the primary cutting edge will be finished on stones. I'll generally run up to a 4,000 grit stone. But the initial grinding to get this off, remember, this is, well, this is stainless clad, but it's blue super. Takeda sounds blue super. It's very wear resistant abrasive resistant so it takes a, it takes a little bit of time that's why if you guys are sharpening these knives at home and you wonder why it's not getting thin the steel itself is made to be resistant to abrasives that's why it's this blue super steel is so good it's magic it's literally super so i'm going to mask up here get my headphones on i'm going to do a couple passes i'm going to show you what we're doing then i'm probably just going to go ahead and try to finish it i'm going to work on an 80 grit I start with, you can go with a 60 grit, but when you have those big, big, giant ceramic particles, that's where you get the errant scratches. Even a fresh 80 can leave those too, so you wanna be careful. If you're doing it at home, if you're confident you can do it, again. Then I'll run probably a 120, 240, and the 400 silicon carbide grit as finding is putting a really nice sort of finish on there for me. So with that, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get rocking. Let me, get my mask on here I'll try to do it as I'm talking I also have a nice ventilation system under here, which is collecting all the dust. You can't really see it, but this is, if you heard that noise come on, it's a big giant like jet engine turbine I've got under here, trying to collect as much dust as possible. You want to mask up, you want to have take safety precautions. You don't want to be breathing in all this stuff, okay? So I'm gonna get my, 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 uh, my, bath, my ice bath ready. I've ground, 
and the original edge. So what's going to happen is this polished edge is going to keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller. I'm probably not going to try to bring this up much more. It's just naturally going to go up. looking I'm doing a pass and I'm looking if you're just gonna jump on a grinder and just grind this grind the heck out of it you're gonna be all over the place okay you got to get your hands and your eyes working in concert this is gonna be a theme for me in these videos Have you seen how they're grinding knives in Japan they've got the big big grinding wheel they're sitting on it rocking and rolling they're looking they're looking okay Keep an idea of what you're doing. If you don't, you're gonna be all over the place. Oh my grind is slowing down. Here. checking out the straight. Sometimes you're grinding these laminated blades it'll start to go one way or another, okay? Keep an eye on it and just fix it as necessary. Don't use your muscles to do it. Just give it a little, a, just a little love touch, okay? I 
noticed it was bending because up by this tip on the left side, that's where I'm, I haven't gotten. So that means it must have been bent outwards, which it was. Okay, it's bent away from the grinder, so I'm going to bend it back into the grinder. Just slightly. These things are so thin. I just need a little bit of, just a little bit of muscle. Okay, you can see now, it's more looking like it's going to be more traditional Japanese edge geometry. Okay, now the wavy lines is because this knife is forged. It still has basically the hammer blows from being forged. So if you look at, oh, that's not the crisp line, it's basically following those grooves of the hammer blows. Now, I don't have it all the way ground. I've got it close to where I want it. But I don't want to go there on my first belt. It'll get there eventually. So I'm going to move on to, say, the next belt, the 120. Then I'm slowly take it down to where I want it. Again, I'm going to cut in my I'm going to cut in my edge with my stone, my primary edge with my cut on my stone. Then I'm going to finish polishing the secondary edge. One twenty grit ceramic. Get a last name and phone number for you? Yeah, it's already scheduled. Perfect. Okay. Come in, I'll give you a text first thing. I'm just like running the video right now, but uh Yeah, no worries. I'll have good as new for you, okay? Thanks, buddy. I'm at my shop, there's a customer, I bring him in, if I, hopefully I'll edit him though. Customer service.
Now what's interesting with these blades is that the initial Scandi edge could almost now be used as the primary edge, okay? But I'm just gonna just refine it a little bit and then I'll know where, where I can kind of keep grinding, so. It's just a thousand grit shaft and stone. Okay, again, this knife is pretty sharp, so I'm just gonna initiate where I want that primary edge, the now new primary edge to be. Quick little burr right there. Quick little burr right there. Okay, now what I'm gonna do, now that I have a burr and I've got an established primary edge, I'm gonna clean up the secondary edge on the further belts. I probably will still run a little bit more of the 120. Just to get it even with it, so that, so that primary edge is basically nice and consistent along the way. So I'm sitting on a spot because, again, this is made by hand, it's sharpened by hand, so that means if it's not, it's not made by robots, hands have the, like, the wabi-sabi effect, okay? They're not always, not always perfectly symmetrical. This is not a slight against the Kata-san or his amazing employees. It's the nature of making knives by hand. So I see this with Fujiwara a lot as well, okay? You see what the sharpener, you are able to determine what the sharpener did and where he was with his stones, okay? So if you see me sitting on this one spot right here, it's just, it's just a little bit uneven. And it's not, again, it's not an insult or anything like that. This left side is looking pretty good. In fact, I'm not even going to touch it. here a little bit so you got to push it outwards toward the belt that's why I'm not if I'm not getting that spot give it a little a little nudge looking and assessing I noticed this trot this is the trouble this is this is a little bit of trouble here I'm not just blindly grinding or else you're gonna over grind you're gonna come to zero you're gonna burn your edge 
and you're gonna mess up the profile as well. Just kissing it, letting the letting the grinder do the work. doing with this? I'm checking the edge geometry. I'm determining is it thin enough? You don't want this too thin because it ends up getting damaged. And that's what we're trying to prevent. Okay, We don't want it super duper thin and that's why we're adding a primary bevel as well, a primary edge, to toughen it up a little bit. Okay, Those knives when they thin, when they chip, it's not a Japanese chip, it's just sometimes they're ground too thin. Obviously, the American user can be a little bit heavy-handed because they're used to big German Western, you know, Western knives that can take a lot of abuse. And Japanese knives can't. But if Japanese knives chip, it's honestly because they're just ground a little bit too thin, and that's what I'm trying to avoid. You just want the right balance. going over to my stone to work this area just a little bit more. I'm glad this happened because it can show you that these are tough jobs. This is as hard as it gets, okay? You gotta be 100% focused. You gotta be 100% aware of what is happening along the edge. Let me just give a little bit more muscle, okay? Sometimes if it's not, you don't want to bend it, over bend it. But then when you have to get it there, just get it there. I'm happy with it. I'm happy with where this is now. So I'm gonna clean it up. 240 grit. Yeah, freshy here. Bear with me. Just go fresh in all around. 240, 400. Now my grinding is basically done. I'm just going to kind of clean up and polish it a little bit, except for that part on the front there. I can work that out.
Okay, 240. Fresh 400, just for a lake that looking nice and polished there. I don't want to hear anything about the comments about it's not Kasumi, okay? All right, Kasumi looks nice. All right, it, Kasumi, Kasumi looks good, but it, it, some people think it helps with food release. I don't know, but like, you want the edge geometry to be there first, okay? If you're, if you, I, I like Kasumi blades, I appreciate people who do that, but it's mostly cosmetic, okay? Now, it's a nice looking cosmetic. I'm not, all right? I love Japanese knives. I love everything about Japanese knives. This is for edge geometry purposes to get into it. I'm not going to go ahead and do all this work on a belt just to sit on stones for 30 minutes to an hour to get a nice Kasumi finish, which will be gone after a few uses. Especially, this is stainless clad. Kasumi, blade, Kasumi finish on stainless is not always that great. It's an iron clad blade, I understand. Literally just a couple passes per side with these fresh silicon carbide belts. That's really all you need. Just make sure they're fresh. any imperfections you can kind of clean them up here but it looks pretty even Now I've got okay. Now I'm going to finish the edge on my stones. Now I already worked a thousand grit, but just to now I've got my four thousand. I'm gonna clean up some fresh water. coming off now.
feeling three finger test of sharpness. And it's one thing these cicadas, every single one has just this insane heat treat that just takes blue super, just it's, it's perfect to be honest. It's not overly hard, all right? You can harden the blade. It doesn't mean the blade is hard with a good heat treat. You want it to be relatively easy to sharpen. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is give me a rag. All right, there, dry it off. Tall dude. Now what I'm gonna do is I've got felt belt over here for polishing. That's how I deburr. I can, any, I can also uh, polish up any new grinds that I do. Again, felt belt and blue compound. I don't use leather. Leather stretches. I like felt. Now, polishing the new grind, but also stropping the primary edge that I just sharpened. A clean rag here. Whoops. Okay, I'm checking out the work. Making sure it looks good. See how best we can get it in the light, okay? So now you see, I did about how many passes that I do on the grinder? 100, 200? Not one scratch on the Kuruuchi, okay? This is the hardest part. You don't want to get a knife. This is why I said at the beginning of the video, don't do this unless you know what you're doing, okay? So. Okay, let's take a better look at this under the light, okay? Traditional now, secondary edge, primary edge. You can see that primary edge, get a little bit of, little bit of glimmer of that. Backside. Now, there isn't one of these that doesn't give me trouble. You saw me sitting on that one spot for a little bit, okay? It's because it's wabi-sabi, it's made by hand, it's gonna have things that aren't perfect. This isn't a. This isn't in no way an insult to cicada sound. He's again. He's a master. I, res I have the utmost respect for this guy. It's just that that's the way Japanese knives are. Everyone, anyone who thinks that it's perfect, every single every knife is perfect. It's just not the way it is. Okay. You wouldn't want that's boring, right? That's boring. If you want something like that, get something made by a machine. You want something made by hand. You know, it's gonna have these tiny little beautiful imperfections. It just takes a little bit of experience to recognize it when you see it and how to address and to fix it. So you guys asked for it. Give me a little, can I do a little hair test? If you guys can see that. Literal insane sharpness. I could probably put this on the best and it would be up for the best scale. I'm sure it will be amazing. So grinding a Takeda on a grinder to create traditional secondary primary edge geometry. This is hard job, okay, it's super focus. But you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments, okay? Again, you guys wanna come figure out how to do this, I can show you in person too, okay? Just reach out, that a, gives a good, good reflection down there with this knife. Now this was 30 minutes work. If you want to do this by hand to get this shinogi as raised as it is, I guarantee you it's going to take you a whole days of grinding.
I've been there, I've done it. That's why I said, screw it, I'm just gonna start doing these on the grinder. Because with a lot of experience doing it by hand, you, your hands can translate onto a machine, okay? Don't just jump on here and be like, oh, Ryan Swanson did it, so I'm gonna do it. Please, again, this is like the full disclaimer. Don't do that, okay? So, if you like the video, if you wanna see more, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, leave some comments. Um, Really excited about this video to see what you guys have to say. You know, a lot of a lot of people have been waiting to see this and see how I do it. Um, figured this is the time to kind of let everybody know what's happening here. So, thanks for watching. Appreciate the feedback you can give, and uh, stay sharp out there, everyone.